Hi. Uh, all right, I'll, I'll try and be quick because I have no idea how long this takes to go through because I refuse to practice stuff, so you just, here you go. Um, so my disclaimer, which I decided I had to start doing because everybody else did them, but they did them because it was like, you know, my company doesn't feel the same way, and that's bullshit. My company feels the same way because I run it. So, um, But no, my disclaimer is that I'll, I'll probably be me. And if you don't like that, or how I talk, or the words that I use, sorry. There's a door, and you can totally use it, and I won't be offended at all. Um, because you guys got me up this morning, and <laughs> I, I didn't want to get up, obviously, to give some presentation somewhere, right? So as a base, I am going to swear, probably at some point or another, I'm not going to try and make a real bad thing of it. I'm going to drink. at probably throughout the whole thing. Um, not today, but, well, I'll start drinking just after this because I don't have a drink right in front of me. Um, I'll try not to puke on anybody. Um, this is like the intro, right? You're supposed to tell people about yourself? Yes. Uh, do you control me? It's all good. I like getting trolled. I think it's fun. I play back, so just be prepared for us to both have a really awesome time and have everybody else laugh at you. Um, Okay, so it's cool. Whatever you guys like, you know, I'm, I'm down with it. So I'm Chris. Um, that's me in all sorts of different ways, right? My, my, my credential slide that everybody's seen before, that one. Um, whatever, it doesn't matter what the hell I've done. Like, who cares? You're not going to be like, oh, he worked at this company? F him, I'm leaving. And, I mean, you might. It might be a better way to do it. Um, so that's kind of other stuff about me, I guess, when you got to have the I love me slides. Um, you know, out of all that sitting there typing on shit, I didn't put the P-test slide I was trying to put in. Fuck. Whatever. Um, and beyond all that, I really like my job. I love it. I love it so much that I made a graphic about how much I love my job. Because <laughs> it's awesome. Um, I get to work with some of the coolest people. I get to go to fun conferences like this and learn shit all the time. And like, you know, uh, to, to a lot of what Christian was talking about, like, I have this weird brand new appreciation for my job that I never had before because I, I, I wasn't ever going out to be famous on stuff. I mean, at one point I thought it was cool that like they made a shitty TV show that failed about me, like fucking awesome. And I was like, you're a loser. You had a failed TV show. Don't talk about that shit. <laughs> and, um, no, but, but I just really love it. I get to just play all day long and meet really interesting people and and you know we're we're like the 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 craziest therapists on the planet we bring our little laptop in we go through all these little things we show them all these bu buttons and numbers and all that stuff and they're like yeah i don't feel so sad or like oh you made me so sad i'm happy um it's just cool right so i just have to express how much i love it anyway so what's this about so i i've given all sorts of weird talks before so I decided I'd have some closure in my life and give some talks about fun things that I really like to do that aren't always just going to get shell on something. Um, because as easy as it may be to get SQL, it may be easy to get some random box that you know everyone has 08067 sitting around somewhere on some machine that just couldn't you know get patched for whatever reason it is. But I love people. Like, I love them so much that I really like get all up in their stuff. Like, I like looking at their stuff. I like looking at the stuff of other people's that they look at. I look at the stuff that they look at that they don't want people to look at. I love it. Like, it is really fun to see the things that someone interacts with behind a closed door when they think nobody's watching. Y'all do weird shit. I know I do weird shit. So you do super weird stuff as well. <laughs> and I'm not just saying that because I don't know. I'm just saying it's weird. And when people do weird stuff, you find out a lot of cool things about them, like what their passwords are, because they do really, really weird stuff. And they're like, no one's going to know. My password is Mr. Furry 7. You know, like, I'm the big, oh, can't say that. Anyway, so, all right, we'll talk about surveilling people, right, and corporate surveillance. And, uh, and I want to start this kind of at a high level, um, because it's easier, and because you guys may need to do this and get to you know, probably after this first piece to really scare the shit out of some executives before they're like, yeah, so you're not allowed to use the internet again. 
and I don't ever want to see your graphs and maps. Just get the fuck out. But I'll still pay you because I know you got all my stuff. So what do you do when you look at corporate companies, right? You want to break them down, right? Boiling the ocean is really hard to do. When I say I want to do intelligence gathering on X, Y, on Swiss Bank, right? It's going to take a lot. I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there. Like, like I'm not going to be utopian and just be like, oh, check this out. I typed in Swiss Bank and LinkedIn. Now I have all the names. Now I know everybody's stuff. No, you just know their stupid LinkedIn name. You don't know anything about them. So we want to go break it down to employees, what partners they have, competitors, adversaries that they have. And adversaries are really good to know, by the way, because before you start surveillance, and this is like the, you're not supposed to tell people. So do the surveillance on their adversaries. Figure out how their adversaries work, and then when you're doing your surveillance, pretend you're one of them. Because if they ever catch you, they're going to think it's them. And they just kind of leave you alone. They'll be like, oh, damn them, our competitors. We'll get them. And then you just start the corporate intelligence war and feed them both and pay tons of money. <laughs> I'm not saying you should do that. You should totally do it. It's cheap. <sighs> um, but you want to get stuff, right? So we've got to start thinking about what, what can we get? How can we break this down into little groups? And how can we monitor pieces of little groups until we find things that are fun? And when we find them that are fun, because we're all ADD in some way, shape, or form, we go, ooh, shiny. And you play with the shiny thing until you get bored and you go, oh, shiny in another category. And you just drop shiny on top of your little buckets. And then at the end of the day, you have a whole bunch of buckets with neat stuff. And you go, cool, what am I going to own? And you look through your buckets and whatever one looks fun, and you go attack things. This, this is the you know, big boys intelligence gathering, right? Um, so how do you find stuff, right? Hoover's is great for businesses. They give you all sorts of stuff like you know, what the person made the year before or, or you know, like the, the people who made salary because you know, they're so, the vice chairman, he's just such a good guy. He only takes 400 grand in salary, but he also had a $700,000 bonus. You know, that's, that's cool. Um, anyway, you can see all sorts of neat stuff when you start mapping out the business to see how the business operates. It also is going to give you all sorts of neat fun once you get to the point of attacking people because you're going to know the company. You're going to be able to name drop all sorts of stuff. I mean, hell, if you get into the point of James Rohr's financials, I'm sure there's something shady and something that he's bought somewhere where you could be like, look, James, I know you made one point, you know, one, six, nine, two, three, one million dollars last year, but the night that you spend $47,000 at secrets, that's not a secret, bud. So we have to talk about how it becomes and stays a secret, okay? Now, I'm kind of a visual person, so I like uh, market visual, which is really good. They also do some interesting analytics around how people work together in the market. Um, seriously, I, I have lost hundreds of days of my life to these stupid graphs because I love them because I click on them and then it goes and blows up into something else. I'm like, oh, why are they connected to ponies? Click, 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 click. And the internet just sucks me in. But try and stay on track because it, it's very hard. And one thing I do like about that is you can get mappings of all the entities and export them. Um, so then one of the tools that we talk about later, you can start infilling data into that. Um, Muck. Muck's really awesome. Um, go to muckity.com. It's another really interesting business analysis website. Uh, again, I'm telling you all of these, they sound like they're the same thing. They are different because they have different data sources. Um, recently, don't tell anybody. Um, recently, I was doing some fun Intel stuff, and there wasn't enough about a particular company. So I filed some issuance grievances with the Better Business Bureau about like me not being able to do my due diligence to get the information I needed about who they were partnered with and how their business operates and all that stuff. So the Better Business Bureau went and they were like, okay, well, we need to get more records. And oh, they sent me a note back. The records were out of date. Thank you for bringing this up to us. We've refreshed the database. I'm like, whatever. Where do I find the refreshed copy? Oh, well, there's this other site that if you use that we actually have a tie to called CorpWiki, um, which I think I have it on here somewhere. CorpWiki pulls state data. So what do I do? I type in the person's name the next day, and all of a sudden, magically, this little chart appears with all of this stuff. Now, granted, the person did a really good job at making their intelligence private because they paid some people off to you know, forget them in the refresh. 
But all you have to do is ask a government authority to refresh that because it's their job to protect you and it's your job to do your due diligence. You know, the information just falls from the sky sometimes. Um, Lil Sis is awesome because Lil Sis is actually run with centralized pieces of data and then the user community inside of Lil Sis starts to attach things to it. So what you start to see is that everybody who's pissed at that company ever starts dropping docs and dirt to this. Because they want people to be like, they're a bad company. And you have all the PETA people and all the Intel people that they pay to go leech information and steal databases and shit like that. Just dump it and link it on here. It's awesome. And they do it, you know, I'm just anonymously helping the world. Oh, you're purposely screwing someone. But I need the information, so I don't care. Right? All right. LinkedIn, yeah, whatever, it's LinkedIn, who cares? Um, Jigsaw is awesome. You, you, you've all used Jigsaw before? It's, it's just a huge, vicious sales database of your name, your title, your email address, your mail stop, your phone number, so that the salespeople can be like, oh, they just got budget for a firewall, and you're a firewall company. Pay me five grand, and I'll give you their phone number and tell you when they're going to need to buy something. They're horrible. And you know what's even better about it is that Salesforce bought them. So now they have everybody's phone number and their Salesforce is doing all of their resource planning, everything else, so they know when the new budget comes in and they're like, oh, cool, I'll just spam these people who are spammers that send firewalls and just have them all call. Like, don't think it's a coincidence that these people just happen to call you when you need shit. <laughs> right? It's cool. Like, use this stuff. I mean, how awesome is that? You get to be like, yo, I'm a firewall vendor. I know you have budget. Why? Uh -oh, just because I just... I, I'm. I got the mots, dude. I'm with it. Like, I, I'm here for you to protect you. Buy stuff. All right. Um, Entity Cube's really neat. It's, a, it's an older Microsoft project that still does really well. The way that they built it, they actually built it so that you could automate the creation of somebody's bio by publicly available sources. Think of how cool that could be if you want to watch someone. <laughs> Show me all the stuff. Click. Yay. All right. So once we've started to whittle down the people that leak too much intelligence, right? those are obviously the ones we have to go over because we don't want to challenge ourselves. We just want to do the easy things and get paid. right? Um, so we've got to look at those people. So you look at some of the things within the people, right? who they are, what they do, why do they do that stuff, and how. It's pretty simple. Yeah? You know, and inside of those, you have the who, and you can find out stuff about them, and we'll talk about who, and, and, you know, who are they? And so these are all, again, super automated ways to find out who someone is. You know, you could go to Namecheck or you could go to one of those places and you could take an email address and parse it against 400 plus different sites and find out where do they also have accounts. Maybe those accounts don't have the awesome security settings that Facebook does, or maybe they do, or, <laughs> You know, maybe they're on some WoW site that doesn't protect anything about their profile and runs PHPBB that has SQL injection and, and you just happen to go over it by accident. Um, and why are they doing that? Like what, like, what are they doing once they exist in this internet of ours? Because it's not theirs. Um, and ways to find out that people, like what they're doing and how they're doing it, there's social networks, right? That's the whole purpose of a social network is you make some identity and then you tell people, I pooped, and they're like, yeah, you pooped, I pooped too. And like, we're totally the same, even though we're in different countries. And they're like, yeah, it's awesome. And be like, fuck you, get out of here. Um, so be, be aware of looking at their media landscape. Where do they talk the most? Why do they talk the most there? Right? These things are really important if you're trying to bag and tag somebody. You know, if, if I'm actively watching them the day or her the day that I want to go after the target site or I want to go plant bugs in their house and things like that, I need to have heads up display of all the places that they talk and who they are running real time so that when they're like, oh, I forgot my key, got to go back home, that sucks, ha, ha, ha. I'm like, yes, it does. Fuck. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Clean up my shit. All right. So... Right? I've, I've already talked about 10 terabytes of information on someone right? the, that you're trying to parse through. So you have to kind of get down to a little bit knowing them. So this is where in the subject you want to actually become the subject. Right? You spend your little you know, chill out mode, you dress up in your like, 
you know, Jeff Bridges, white Tron shit, and you just sit there and like meditate and figure out how can you manipulate this person, who they are, right? I need to go into who they are. All right, I know that they went to this school. Here's my perceptions about people in this school and, and what happened. And I know they were in this fraternity. And I know that I'm similar to them in these and these and these ways. So I can start to kind of get into that character. I know that they're this race. I know that they're this religion. I know that, you know, they believe in their religion this or this much. This is how their parents operate. This is how they are. This is how their sisters are. Here's the candid nature of their conversation between this person versus the professional nature here. Can I have the professional conversation? Can I have the candid conversation? Right? You get into that because what that's going to do is it's going to start to see you how they see the world. And by looking at how they see the world, which is the most accurate picture of the world, of course, because it's theirs, you're going to start being able to figure out where they drop things that you didn't have on your first search, right? You're going to know that if they use religious passwords, a bank of them that are most likely, you're going to know that if they have superstitions about something, if all you have to do is, you know, steal a black cat out of an alleyway and throw that little bastard in a street in order for them to turn their car around and go another direction because they're afraid to cross the road, you get to really control that person. And when they're off their game and they're not doing what they would normally do, they screw up. And when they screw up, we win. Yeah? Um... You know, how far are you from Kevin Bacon? You want to find people's connections. Google will tell you. If I type in your name and Bacon number, it'll tell you how many connections that you have until you get to Kevin Bacon. Now, it doesn't tell me between me and my target, but it's something to think about. How does that play out? Okay. And everybody wants to see this. Right? Everybody wants to know this. Every social network in the world wants to know how close you are to somebody else because the closer they can get you together, the more value they're providing you and the more likely you are to like, give them money or toys or credits or coins or fucking artichokes or whatever the hell they make money on. Okay? Mapping the relationships. So now we have an idea of who they are. We have an idea of what they're doing, where they're doing it. But who are they doing it with? Because maybe they're like some hardened, go to security conferences all the time, super paranoid, blah, 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 blah. But maybe their wife doesn't give a shit about any of that stuff. <laughs> you know, like, awesome, go get her. <laughs> like, you'll get close. It'll be fine. You'll get in. Right? So you need to look at these things. You need to be able to look at them like we're scanning for vulnerabilities on a network. Oh, sorry. Um, Multigo, you always use Multigo, right? Yeah? Awesome. Good stuff. Y'all go to the little communities and extra page and go to everybody else's site who works on the really dope plugins of, you know, all their Facebook and Rapid Leaf plugins and all the other neat things. If you haven't, visit that page a lot more than the main Multigo page because it's the community does excellent work with it. Um, Salesforce apps, use any of those? That new to people? So Salesforce has some really cool things, right? They have org chart. Is, do you guys, is that something, if, if you could leak out the entire org chart of an organization, is that a finding you would tell somebody? Yeah, maybe? They're like, shut up. So the org chart, you like click the company and click org chart and it goes boop and like makes an org chart for you. That's cool. Right? Inside view is also really neat. Shows you who's at what position and what levels and which one of them are willing to answer questions on things like Glassdoor and, and other websites like that. Um, Squirio is sales intelligence. So if it can find out the types of things that you are trying to look after, like, like the keywords that you're searching for for Twitter, that's going to make sure it hits your feed to know that you wanted to do it something with their company. right? Or make sure that if you were pissed about something, that they would see it. Well, if I know what's going to make positive that you will click on something to see what it's about, like, I've got you right there. I don't even have to. I can close my eyes and shoot in the dark, and I know it's going to hit you. This is built for you. Touch graph. Anyone use touch graph before? Showing different types of weighted relationships by folding in networks. Uh, touch graph supports Facebook um, and 
It's kind of half ass supports LinkedIn, not really, but it does. Um, and then it actually makes collusion circles to say these people are very close to each other, these people are close to each other, and these people are close to each other. And my amalgamation of my own is the you know, horrible incestuous security community and like some other people I know, <laughs> right? Um, Facebook's really fun to do that with because they have security controls and their security controls are stupid. Um, have you ever typed someone's name, a question mark and equals then somebody else's name? Yeah, do you know what it does? It brings up a page completely dedicated to how this person knows this person. That's hot. Like, that's so, like, boner awesome. <laughs> like, I have to know how you know this person. No problem, just type in and equals, bloop. And you're like, really? I mean, it even tells you, like, when they became friends. That's gangster. Thank you for securing my book face. Um, all right, uh, LinkedIn has some neat maps, too. They make theirs all wispy and cool looking, um, again. It auto-populates when you have bigger circles. Yeah, information security, colleagues, and 303. So again, here's my devoted InfoSec life and like the random uh, sprint, you know, like some people from a job I used to work at that I know. Um, but see how these things, it, as you get more visual with some of these maps, you start to see some really, really interesting stuff. Um, some of the things that you're looking for, right, is you're, you're looking for collusion points. You're looking for who would be an easy target. You're looking for somebody who's outside of your target list but connected to your target that you're looking at because they may just leak a lot more information because they don't have the same level of acumen. You know that you know, Sally and Jess are going to a concert that night, but Sally won't post stuff on Twitter because at one point she almost got caught cheating on her husband because her husband found that thing, so she doesn't do it anymore. But Jess posts all the fucking time, and she's gonna post pictures of Sally and the dude at the concert and be like, yo, what's up, look, and they're making out, and she's like, yeah, Facebook. Um, you wanna find those people, right? Because we need to track them real time. Uh, so we wanna look at how we can overlay and analyze the places that we've found good information, take that, correlate that into something reasonable. Um, I'm not even gonna go into this, because someday I've now figured out that I'm gonna give a talk about why I built some of these because it's gonna take five hours. But look up something called Node Excel. And if you've never used it, which I don't know, is there anyone who's ever even heard of it? Okay, so Node Excel is a Microsoft thing. And it's all about being able to take multiple different data points and create weighted pieces of collusion through importing them all into Excel, okay? So part of this one was importing them into Excel using a couple different data networks, being able to now break out from those data networks who knew each other and then start to whittle down from who knew each other to this person knows somebody here and knows somebody here but doesn't know someone here so they go into this circle. This one knows someone here and here but doesn't know one here and here so they go into this circle. So now I can start seeing, all right, you know someone else on five different social networks but not on this one. So if I want to fish them or something like that, obviously I want to use the one that they're not connected on and be like, yo, I just got on this. I know that you know, I'm connected to you in every other social network on the freaking planet. And they're going to just, they're, no question, they're going to hook it right, right away. Um, but it also is going to show you some really, really neat things which you're going to start seeing about who they hang out with. Way more, you're going to watch the lines open, right? As you're looking at these people and you analyze these things in a visual format, you start to see who they interact with more. And if it's not the one that you thought, then you now know where to start watching the streams. So that's what it ends up coming out like when I did it at DerbyCon. And I was checking people that were connected to Kennedy. And uh, we were taking Twitter and LinkedIn and a couple other ones. And I had it map the people that were connected to him on three out of four social networks. And then I could instantly pull out the five or seven targets that weren't connected to him on all five, but four out of five, so that I could actually send things from them. Make sense? Target selection analysis, right? So now we have all the stuff that we want to get. We know who's easy to get information from. We know who their best friends are and how to watch them too while we're going after them. Now we have to go after them because we want to see what their relationship path is. 
Um, this is one of my favorite, 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 favorite relationship paths that have ever been built. Okay? There's the biggest thing in X-Men that this tells you that no one's ever really willing to tell you. Is that Professor X... I gotta find him. He's like over in the middle somewhere. Uh, 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 uh. See, isn't that awesome? You can't even find him because he's so fucking irrelevant. It's just, it's just so cool. So, okay, right there. So, but, like, Wolverine's the man. If you want to spread a message to the X-Men about something, you don't give it to the professor. You don't give that shit to Beast who pisses everybody off. You give it to Wolverine and everyone now believes it is truth. He gets to become the bearer of your message. So when you want to start creating spies in an organization or leaking intelligence or saying, oh, there's this new thing that you should use because it's really awesome, you're not going to try and directly engage that person. You directly engage the people who are the head of their sphere of influence, which we've been able to find through all of the graphing we've been doing. And now that we have that relationship data, we only go after that one person and eventually our target comes to us. Neat. Big boy intelligence, not click, find, copy, paste into report. Okay? You can do that stuff with case file. It's just how you do it is going to make sense or not, right? Because case file and Multigo and, and all of these tools, right, they overpopulate with data. So what, what our job is as Intel analysts when we're going after these things is to figure out data and cleansing every single time we do an import. When we do an import and we figure out what we're using and how we're using it, we scrub everything else around it. Well, this is mildly important. Great. Put it in a mildly important folder and get it off your table right now because the more that you have in front of it, the harder it's going to be for you to figure out what your targets really are. Um, you can do that with cell phones and all sorts of other stuff. Have, has anybody played with Stalker that, that Immunity made? It's really cool. So... <laughs> So it starts doing some of those mappings and, and those types of things for you. The other cool thing about Stalker is Stalker will actually plug into some things like cell phone networks um, so that you can start figuring out who's talking to who and then correlating those pieces of data back to collusion patterns and spheres of influence. That'd be convenient to know. I don't associate with you on any social network whatsoever, but I send you 100 text messages a day. Huh. Why? <laughs> How come no one else is supposed to know you know that person? What are you doing? Um, the the uh, SensePost guys have started the same thing. They're a lot more dirty about it, which I love them for. <laughs> I mean, because they're actually using things like AR drones to create WAP access points and use visual target analysis in order to fly over the people so that they can continue to be their cell phone tower and watch them all day long. And then pull that information back and start correlating it into their influence maps. Cool. You can get this stuff, by the way. This is James Bond shit. You can just go buy it. It's awesome. Okay. So now you, now you know who you want, right? So now we got to go get them. You know, we got to look at them, right? We got to get up on that person. No more of this remote sending things. That game's done with. Okay. First, we're going to figure out our takedown plans for them. Do I want to fish them? Am I going to compromise them externally? Are we going to use on-site attacks? Am I going to, like, you know, start hitting on her best friend? You know, just hit on her best friend's sister, so I'm kind of like a path removed, but I still get to be around the areas that I need to. Um, you know, are we going to go and create other types of intelligence leaks in the org? Find somebody, because we did all this intel collection, that is super-duper pissed off at the company and then feed them some evidence because of your intelligence gathering that kind of gives them what they need to be really pissed, and then trade them. Anger information is an awesome trade because people are so fired up that they want to be right, and when you confirm that, you've lifted this huge weight off their shoulder and pissed them off. So you've got them to get an excuse to behave even more poorly, but they see you as like the messiah of truth because you like help, you like, they're like, for 10 years I've known this been going on and you finally showed me like, ah, I love you, you know, like whatever. And you can just get them to do all sorts of fun stuff for you. So maybe you need to sandbag the person and get them moved out of the office for a day so you can bug all their stuff or whatever it is. Okay, or you know, I, I, you guys can read. Going through making shell companies and things like that if you're gonna actually attack the business for something like this. 
Um, once you get it, you might have to get in. So I put some things that I'm putting into one of our new updated Red Team talks and that Ian and I talk about in our classes on here. Um, just because if you get no other info, you could copy these two slides and be like, yeah, I went and owned a bunch of people. Um, so you got to get inside, right? So you could do all the you know, SE stuff. You could lie your way in. You could dress up funny. You, know, you could kick a door in or all that stuff. Or you could do what we usually do, which is electronically get them and then go own the badge system. And then when you own the badge system, you go in and you make yourself a badge. And then you go, oh, I forgot my badge. And then they give you a badge, right? Because you forgot your badge. But you're in the badge system, and like your picture's in it, and all that shit. So like you're obviously an employee of the company who hacks the badge system. Um, and so I'm not going to talk about those. I'll let you read them and know how completely ridiculous. Oh, badge systems are built for security guards. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're not real complex, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> the passwords are. Not real complex. Like, the passwords are not real complex at all. OK? <laughs> uh, yeah, this one's super awesome. Because it's 8189. It brings up a like, little pseudo web interface. And you can't change the database password. <laughs> can't change it. It breaks it. Yeah. Yeah, they told me, oh, yeah, yeah, you could change it. It's in the manual. I was like, I have all the manuals that have been printed since, like, 98, and it, that's not true. They're like, well, you don't have the update manual because you're not a customer. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> right on, dude. <laughs> you're, you, you got it. Um, even funnier, like, once you start looking into Linnell, these are the two biggest badge systems in the world. Um, they get deployed in the most places. You got a 50-50 shot of getting one of these, too, if you find a badge system. Um, they have the worst web app vulnerabilities you'll ever see. And I don't know anything about web apps, so I can't tell you how to exploit them. But um, like to the point of you could just like slash write down stuff and get anonymous access, which is valid. But it still gives you access to administer stuff. It's just called anonymous access on the top of the page, which I guess they meant like anonymous the crew, like here's how you own it, not like an individual we don't know, like it was like a gift. Um, anyway, so when you're doing that, after you get that, you want to also automate finding some of these things, right? Finding the badge systems, you want to find um, what ports are there. So like, you know, go through, take my talk at some point, go through, grab all those ports that I was talking about and look through the network for that stuff and just, just touch the box once and you'll realize how like old and decrepit and effed up it is because like the security people just only type in like okay or no and then they're like you know chicken scratch nightly reports. Um, webcams are awesome and security cameras are awesome. I mean what a better place to camp out and watch what their passwords are or anything else than wonderful PTZ camera systems where you can just start learning more and more and more about the environment. It's not about getting it right now. It's about getting it at some point. Just archive it. Watch it. Hang out. Like, like instead of watching TV, watch this. It's way more fun. You get to interact with it. Mm. So when you do this, just go through, script up really quickly all the ports you want to look for, grab all the banners, then go take all the Google dorks from all the cameras and parse all of your banner log against the Google dorks. So it's like you're Google dorking, but it's internal. Um, and you'll, you'll find the badge system in the first like two or three minutes. It's, it's super fun. Um, all right, getting someone's phone. Um, so we've all sat there and gone like this under a light before. Right? And that makes you look stupid. And it takes time. And then you get it wrong, and then your prints are all over the thing, which kind of extra screws up the whole covert surveillance piece. So don't do that. Um, use wedding agents, right? That's what law enforcement does. Do it. CH45 is like four bucks for a big jar of it. You can make it really even cheaper. Um, go to an art store and get the finest level of graphite powder that you can find. Pour it on top of the phone. Just shake the thing out. You'll see this really distinct pattern. Right? If you want to get the codes off of an alarm system or something like that, don't hang out at the alarm system. Walk by the alarm system with a sponge, 
and put some Tide soap on it because Tide has all this really cool shit in it that glows if anybody's ever done acid in a college dorm room. And just walk by it and hang out and go like this over the keypad and walk by. And at some point, because it dries, someone will come over and touch the keys in and then you put a black light up to it and it shows you what keys they used. Easy stuff not attributable to you because you're not touching their crap, okay? I mean, take their SD card, go to Kaz's talk and learn how to make a freaking crossover cable. Um, there's so much stuff that you can do with it. Just take it. When you get physically next to someone's things, that's when it gets really fun. And I think that's a lot of times the like pen testy type community breaks down because they're like, Ah, I've got it in my hands. You're like, why is it in your hands? They're like, ah, I don't know. I thought I was going to do something with it. I'm like, do something. And they're like, I can't touch it. Why? Because you said not to. I'm like, just get the shit and go. Um, but take it. Like, you're allowed to. Just go for it. I mean, take it, copy it. Once you get on there, don't put like generic key lock. I mean, if you have to use Metasploit because you're like devoted to it and you have a tattoo of it on your penis or something, like, fine. <laughs> I get it, you're sponsored, you know, but like, and, and that's nothing to say about the tool because that's some awesome shit that everyone should use anyway. But be covert when you're key logging, like break IE so that it kind of doesn't work right or it's mad slow or it loads every page nine times before it displays it. Like there's fun settings for that and I don't know why they exist. Um, but then make Firefox fast and super awesome, like do the little, you know, faster Fox or whatever, like all the, browser tweaks and so it kicks ass and IE sucks and they just start using Firefox. And then use like keylogger add-ins in Firefox because then their AV isn't gonna find it because the AV never looks at the fucking XPIs that are in Firefox. They don't care. They just look at like the browser helper objects and bullshit like that. They don't look at the fun, cool XPIs that you're putting in there, especially if you encrypt them right. And now you have a really awesome keylogger for all the shady bullshit that they're doing on the internet. Like, you know, talking in Google chat. <laughs> It's awesome, it's encrypted. Yes, it is, as soon as it gets past this screen. But it's not encrypted for me, <laughs> right? So you want to use that stuff. Let, just let it sit. Batch it. Send the shit to your Gmail once a night. Um, if you get impatient and you know, really need to do something, anybody use Screen Locker or Smart Locker before? You know, just put a Metasploit shell on there. Just run Smart Locker. It locks the desktop. They're like, oh, my password timed out. And they type back in. And you're like, cool. Now I don't have to worry about using Emicats or GPP to extract shit and like do all the crazy hard pen testy stuff. I just have them type it for me. I'm a fan of the easy, by the way. Um, don't forget the obvious stuff. Everybody likes to chat with each other. You know, Digsby is great. They encrypt their password, except somebody figured out exactly how it works and it's you know they made it a utility to uncrypt digsby passwords so you click it and it goes boop, password um pigeon pigeon's the best you go to dot purple and you open it in a text editor and that's all their passwords are in plain text that's cool that's good to have <laughs> you know key pass is is excellent for things like that if uh if you can't get it and they have some you know ninja shit running on their machine don't be like afraid to just go old school and like put a keylogger into the thing. They're not gonna find it. No one goes like between their desk. I mean, especially if you look at it and see that there's dust and you know like weird cookies from the '80s and like other shit back there. Like, they never go back there anyway. Just hide it under the nastiest, dirtiest, yucky thing that there is because you're wearing gloves anyway. Um, enterprises use the hell out of KeyPass, which is awesome because you know the front end of KeyPass doesn't work really well when you use a keylogger, but everything else is awesomely encrypted and you know, like super duper secure, but keylog it, who cares? Yay, I win, master password. Um, there's also these other things, if anybody starts looking into them, and I, and I totally am not gonna say anything about it except for look into them. <laughs> but these are all these like add-ons to KeyPass so that you can use KeyPass and IE, and it automatically fills your passwords in for every other website by taking the master password, which it stores in IE for you, and, and associating that with the sites and just making it like your single sign-on, like, little love thing. Man, think about that. 
IE has the password. I wonder if you can get it. Uh, hmm. Don't overlook add-ons, right? Attacking the third party is almost always the easy way because the third party is like the trusted thing. And then like, you know, I could be suspicious of KeyPass, but not of this XPI that I install in Firefox. And especially if you find out that they really need that shit, just make one. Like, and don't let it work <laughs> and install shit on their machine that way. All right, so yeah, now we gotta get weird. Um, so that's all stuff that all of us have probably done in one way, shape, or form, right? But how many of you guys really watch people? Because that's the fun part. Um, getting gear to watch people is a blast. You gotta first figure out how to hide it. Now, the, the rule of hiding anything is to always be in plain sight. It's the best rule, because one, you're gonna get the best information, and two, it's the last place they're gonna look. So, like, you know, hiding a camera inside of a camera, they're not gonna be like, I wonder if there's a camera in there. We're like, yeah, no shit, there's a camera in there. It's a camera, look, you know? Well, I didn't know if it's our camera, but it, there is definitely a camera right there. All right, so I get to be the camera repair guy for a day. Like, screw the camera up, rip the guts out, put my shit in. Um, these are awesome, these C80s. They're made by uh, Celestron. They're telescopes. They're, they're optical 1,000 uh, millimeter, 2,000, 3,000 millimeter lenses that are only this big. And for 40 bucks, you can buy a D-shoe to hook it up to your camera that also has 10x modifi you know, magnification digitally. You can reach way out and touch somebody. Like and take full motion video from way far away. I was joking at DerbyCon that this is the perfect way to make a, you know, anonymous porno. I mean, I mean you're not dropping docs, but I'm making money. You're like, like, oh, it's amateur night, check this out. I was 3,000 yards away and I have a POV shot. You know, um, um, I have gotten written conversations in highlight areas at over 2,000 yards. Um, and they can go a lot farther. That's just because I don't have like big baller money and I go to thrift stores and shit. <laughs> like, um, and since you're making a porno, you need to have the audio and the video quality be enhanced, <laughs> right? So you wanna be able to also plant video inside of the area where your target is because everybody knows when you know the final moment happens you want to have that matrix view of all of it right <laughs> so you got to have multiple different places in order to actually kind of bend the target out so we want to put cameras in different areas um, we also want to make sure that every opportunity that we have to listen to somebody we can so if we know some of the places that they have their secret conversation and there's a power strip there, bug it. Even when you're running your bug sweeper over it, the bug sweeper freaks out because it's, you know, it's a power strip. And most people just have to take those apart and pull them out. Um, there's plenty of them that are already pre-built into you know, the walls that you can use. And hey, awesome, it has free power. And what else can you do? Oh, I can take the power and I can use that as a way to get the audio. So now I can just go and listen to the power lines cool, all I have to do is plug into their green box outside. That's easy. Um, using GSM and CDMA is a great way because it's a higher frequency, so it's not gonna get your normal RF bugs. Giving them toys is really cool. Giving their kids toys is even cooler. Um, my kid's toy isn't listening to me. Um, okay, don't be cheap. But if you wanna be cheap, it's totally okay. Lucid Science is a really awesome, has anybody ever been to that site before? It's a cool like little make stuff site. Did a whole series on making like spy gear, right? So three volt DC power supply, MPN translator, a cell from a nightlight or just a regular like photo cell, right? And a laser and some headphones and an amplifier. That Now you have what the FBI calls their $10,000 interceptor. The Interceptor 1, though, because the Interceptor 1's a single laser, and it's like a mild parabolic, and then they have some other refractors and shit. But the, but the Interceptor 9, the big one that they use to catch you talking um, when you're like doing drug deals or something like that, is like $100,000. And this one's a little bit better than the Interceptor 1. <laughs> um, it costs like 17 bucks. 
but it's a laser mic. Laser mics are really, really easy in principle, right? You shoot a laser at something, as long as I can keep it stable and on a tripod and I can make it so that it shoots directly back at me, I can use my photo sensor, take what comes into the photo sensor, output that to an amplifier, and listen. Yeah? Hey, my boardroom has glass windows. Oh, no, why? Because here's all your information, tape recorder. <laughs> Right? Oh, here's all my information. I bugged it really technologically cool. Here's all my information. Call into this cell number because I dropped the cell phone in, under the table. Uh, oh, no, here's all my information. Here's me pointing a laser pointer at you laughing with headphones on. Right? Okay, <laughs> making bugs, making FM bugs. They're still really practical and really useful. Right? Go to Lucid Science, figure out how to make them. It takes like two minutes to make this shit. Um, in touch uh, is one of the great, uh, MVC is one of the great car tracking companies. They work everywhere, globally, three months for 240 bucks and you can track somebody real time. Walk up, throw shit underneath their car and giggle as you watch them drive around all day. <laughs> now again, if you show the CEO a map of like, here's where you've been all day, that's a problem. Like I guarantee you that person's gonna freak out and be like, why is this allowed? You can even do really cool things inside of InTouch and you can make zones. So like you can put a fence up and be like, anytime they leave their little fenced area, you have to let me know. Until then, I don't really care about it because they can be shady in their neighborhood, but if they go out of their neighborhood, I want to know right now. You can build your own of those. Um, I'm not going to talk because I only have like two minutes. Um, cameras in their car. Breaking into somebody's car is easy, right? We all know that. Like getting into cars is super easy. So replace their, their rear view mirror with one that has cameras all over it so that you can see what's going on in their car. Because if they're doing weird shady stuff in their car, you want to know that. And since it's a hardware DVR with an SD card, it's totally easy to pick up and it's on all the time. Um, attack the stuff that they have on them. Attack the stuff in their pants, just not that way. Um, attack everything around them and think of everything as a conduit for your information, okay? Bug their cell phones. Anybody use Mobi Stealth or any of those before? Oh, it's awesome. It just shows you everything that they're doing. Every call that they made, every SMS that they sent, their GPS location if it's on, when they turned it off, who they sent the email to, pictures, blah, blah, blah. And if you can't track it because you can't get a hold of their cell phone, make a cell phone tower. It's not hard. It's going to cost you like five grand. Um, you know, use Osmocom and Aeroprobe and some of the THC sniffing stuff. It's, it's super, like, I'm an idiot when it comes to the tech shit, and I can build these. So, like, you easily build this shit. And, you know, get it kind of close. You don't really have to. I mean, you get to see a whole bunch of other people's stuff. Just shh, be quiet. Um, now, my favorite one, and this is, I'm going to spend my last second on this, um, is I love BlackBerry because it sucks as a phone and everything else. But it's just, it, just, it just runs, you know. It just has that, like, old school, I still run functionality to it that I like. So you pull it apart and you shove it in the little area above where the people's speaker is that they use their Bluetooth connection and their connection to all their other crap that they talk to. And <clears throat> all you have to do is just get on the microphone, make a read switch so that you can pair the microphone of this and bridge it to the microphone inside the car, which is already amplified for you, which is totally convenient. And then you put some software on the phone, which you can easily go get, you know, these uh, or others, you know, get phone snoop or th there's other lot, there's lots and lots of stuff. There's a lot of Java ones that are out there. And then you take one of these because there's a bunch of power up in that area where the lights are and you hardwire your USB power supply into it. And now you have a fully functional bugged car with GPS and phone and all sorts of other capabilities that you can dial into at any time you'd like to see what's going on in your car. And then if you do it the right way, which I learned how to do later. Um, you can actually attach this to your DVR, and as they're driving around, like watch them real-time video and have the heads-up map of where they're going and who they're talking to and sending texts to. Because you see them like this, and you're like, who are they texting? And you just log into that, and you can see what they're texting. And boy, is that a fun display to show somebody. Here's where your ride Wednesday. You texted this person 19 times between here and here. Your face is really funny when you almost got into an accident because you rear-ended that dude because you were texting at 14 minutes and three seconds into the video. <laughs> Why did you say this? Um, 
I got to get going. So my, my, my only hopes with this is that it gives you some ideas on what else we can do as far as getting physical and working with and around people to do what we do and not always have it be, oh, they didn't click my fish. I'm stopped. That's it.